Pinckney still showing the effects of that virus. Played an outstanding game. Gary McClain at guard had one of the best games he's had all season. Dwayne McClain, Harold Presley, Harold Jensen, Dwight Wilbur. We could name all the names because even the guys on the bench showed them support all season long. Again, Roley Massimino said after every practice, he talked about how basketball related to life. The lesson today, hard work and dedication lead to the national championship. Again, they'll ride this royal coach tomorrow morning back to Philadelphia. And I can tell you, it will never touch its wheels on the ground. It is going to be some kind of a flight. We will be with the Wildcats as they head back to Philadelphia. And we'll be reporting on the flight and the hoopla all day tomorrow. Again, Don, just an unbelievable victory for Villanova, the Cinderella team. They win it all, the national champions. I'm Scott Palmer, Channel 6 Action News, live in Lexington. It's going to be some kind of party right through the night, and with some kind of effort, great kind of effort that a heroic drama is made of. Villanova dared to dream the so-called impossible dream, the dream of a national championship against a team that was the defending national champion and a team that many in college basketball who called themselves experts said could not be beaten by anyone. But no one had enough credit given to the Villanova program, a program designed and crafted by Roly Massimino, a man who, as I mentioned in the introduction moments ago, knows all about discipline, about how to play your kind of basketball game, about how to move the ball around and find the guy inside, in that case, Harold Presley. And believe me, this is a good Villanova team, and this is a good Georgetown team, so it was an up-and-down battle. Harold Jensen there, answering Georgetown. But then Georgetown goes inside to the big guy, Patrick Ewing, and you see that kind of action there. Here we are at the end of the half, Nova down by one, Presley puts him up by one. And in the second half, Nova does not seem fatigued at all. If anything, they are energized, even though their starters were in the game almost the entire way. Outside, inside, they did it all. And then here, we see it all coming down to the final seconds. When the ball goes up in the air and the jumping begins, Villanova has defeated Georgetown 66 to 64. The Wildcats are the national champions. And I thought it was very touching there that at the very end there, Roley Massimino mentioned Jake Nevin, the longtime trainer who we see on the bench in the wheelchair, and the late Al Severance, a coach at Villanova who was a legend and passed away this morning of a heart attack. Typical of the class of Roley Massimino and everyone at Villanova that they would think of people like Nevin and the late great Al Severance at a moment of great joy. Very classic. And as you might expect, the Villanova campus on the main line tonight is not the most tranquil place in the Delaware Valley. Elliot Rodriguez is there live amidst his own celebration. Elliot, tr give it a try, Elliot. I didn't hear a word either, but the picture tells the story. Pandemonium on the college Villanova. basketball. What a night in the Delaware Valley. The Villanova Wildcats have defied the odds, and they've gone the distance tonight. They are the number one team in the nation. Our team coverage begins live in Lexing Lexington, Kentucky, where Joe Pellegrino is with the Wildcats live. He's been with them most of the week, Joe. They were nine-point underdogs. They went on to win. Very tough competition. They are the number one team. I saw it. I'm not sure I believe it. It was unbelievable as the Villanova Wildcats kept coming back. I thought when Patrick Ewing scored three jams in a row that they were not probably going to come back. But you know what they did? They kept scoring a basket coming back. At probably one of the keys was they scored a bucket to go in with the lead at halftime. That had to be a tremendous boost for them. They scored 72% from the floor, had a one-point lead in the first half. Guess what they shot in the second half? 79% from the floor total, meaning they shot over 80% from the floor in the second half. It's a tournament record. I, as again, I, I've seen the miracle. They, they caught the lightning in the bottle tonight. They beat one of the greatest basketball teams in history. Georgetown, without a doubt, is one of the classic teams. Man for man, have more talent than Villanova, but they didn't have the experience, apparently. The tournament savvy when they really needed it because whatever Villanova was asked to do, they did it. Harold Jensen came down, hit a jump shot with 2.33 left. 
put them ahead by one point. It was a magnificent victory. I think all of the Delaware Valley is probably topsy-turvy if you like basketball just a little bit. We'll be back later on. We'll try to have some guests, some Nova fans, some Georgetown fans if they're going to talk to us, and we'll see you in a little while. We just saw a glimpse of it, Joe, in the very beginning. There is a lot of celebration here in the Delaware Valley. They're calling it a Cinderella finish, but a lot of hard work went into this win tonight for Villanova and the Wildcats. Thanks, Joe. Well, tonight, the focal point for the Delaware Valley's victory celebration is the Villanova campus. And Suzanne Bates, she is there live right now with a party, I guess you can say, <laughs> has just begun. Suzanne? Well, Alan, we have absolute pandemonium on the campus of Villanova tonight. Students are pouring out of the dorms, and you can hear the chants behind me. It's just deafening. I'm going to try to talk to a few of the students and see what they have to say. What's your name? Mark Walsh. What do you think about this? Can you believe it? Oh, be a, it's going to be a lifetime experience. It'll be a lifetime experience. The best experience I'll ever have at Villanova. Definitely. Thanks a lot. We don't want to create a mob scene out here, so we're going to cut it short, Alan. But I can tell you the students here absolutely can't believe it. They are so proud of the Wildcats tonight, and they have every reason to be. All right, Suzanne, thank you. I'm Chris Long along Lancaster Avenue just off campus. I'll tell you, we have a mob scene out here right now. Let's move that camera down. But so far, I can report the students are enjoying themselves but really behaving themselves rather well so far. This is just away from Kelly's Bar, which is a very, very popular off-campus uh, drinking spot. And about 400 jam Kelly's throughout the game to watch it. They poured out of here shortly after the seconds ticked off in the big Villanova victory. And as you can see, they are having quite, quite a time. They're on top of each other's shoulders. They are hollering and screaming and holding up signs, but again, behaving themselves fairly well so far. I am counting about 30 Lower Marion police officers on the scene right now. The cars wrapped, you can see behind me, are streaming solidly one after one up and down Lancaster Avenue. So far, though, the students behaving themselves well. Let's take you back now just a few hours ago and take a look at some of the security measures that were put in force for tonight's game. Just about an hour before game time tonight, 60 Pennsylvania State Police officers arrived on Villanova's campus, some from barracks as far away as Bethlehem. They assembled in the university's field house and began their wait, ready to back up school security on campus if needed. At the beginning of the game, the few officers who really seemed interested had to rely on a radio broadcast. But Villanova officials soon proved better hosts and came up with a television set. Outside Kelly's Bar, just off campus, an overflow crowd of young fans had to be content with viewing the game through the window. Simply no more room inside. In typical college fashion, the beer was flowing tonight. Bar manager T.C. Biggins saying he really stocked up for the evening. We probably laid in three times as much as we usually do. The, the beer delivery place had to make two trips out. All right, a fan here just handed me a basketball net, and I guess that's appropriate tonight here. Once again, the students behaving themselves fairly well. The police seem to have everything in hand. I would heartily advise you, though, to avoid this area of Lancaster Avenue and Bryn Mawr unless you really need to be here tonight. We'll check in back again a little bit later. This is Chris Long, live, reporting from just off campus. Alan? Okay, Chris, they have a good reason to celebrate, and as we mentioned earlier, the celebration has only just begun. There is no better time to witness the pure, unbridled joy of the winning team than right after the game. Let's take a look. Oh, no one thought we could do it, but I did, and so did they. They played a great basketball game. I'm not even excited. I think it's really hey, right. We just believed in ourselves and a lot of hard work on everybody's part. Not only a team, but, you know, the fans, they were all behind us. Everybody from Philadelphia, hello. There, there's a statue in Philadelphia of a guy standing up holding his fist. Tonight, you were that guy playing in the backcourt against all that pressure. Incredible offensive performance on your part. Oh, I, I just attribute it to all hard work. We worked so hard. Nobody in America knows how Villanova worked so hard. Lots of hard work. And those are the thoughts. Roly Massimino, the coach of the uh, Villanova Wildcats, his players, some of the fans. Big Al Meltzer is here right now to share his thoughts tonight. Well, Alan, it wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. The team that couldn't shoot straight set an NCAA record for shooting from the field. The team that had to play Dayton, Maryland, Michigan, North Carolina, Memphis State, Georgetown, and needed their best game ever to win, 
did it. The team seated eighth in their regional, unranked, did it. The team that had already lost to Georgetown twice this year, did it. Villanova had never won an NCAA championship before. They got into the finals. They've done the impossible. Never mind the polls or what the experts think. Where it counts is that the Wildcats and their emotional leader, Roley Massimino, are number one. They did it for Al Severance, who passed on today, a 25-year coach. They did it for Jake Nevin. They did it for Villanova. They did it for Philadelphia. They are truly number one. Villanova, the champions of all of college basketball. And we couldn't be happier. I second that. A lot of hard work went into this win, as we mentioned earlier. We'll check in with you a bit later on. The joy of the Wildcats' victory will be shared by the entire Delaware Valley tomorrow. As we said, the, the uh, celebrations have just begun. The city of Philadelphia has scheduled a victory parade around City Hall. It begins at 12 noon with ceremonies afterward at JFK Plaza. You'll see it live right here on Channel 10. But tonight, after our news broadcast, we'll present a special salute to the Wildcats, a look back at Villanova's 1984-85 season. That's tonight, right after the Channel 10 news update. Throughout this entire year, and especially this evening, these kids were just great. Um, and everyone wrote us off and didn't think that we had even a chance to win. But they persevered, and I'll just tell you one thing that I told the kids, and I never have after our Mass today, which we have after or before every pregame meal. I just wanted them to go upstairs for 15 minutes by themselves and think about the game and think of two things. One, to play with the idea that not to lose instead of play to win. And the second thing, that they had to go upstairs and tell themselves that they were good enough to win, that in one shot deal, that we could beat anyone in the United States. And that's all I told them. And uh, the elation, the jubilance, the emotion was, was unbelievable. I think we tried to relieve them. This was a total, total team effort, including my assistants and everyone involved in this program. Tragedy happened this morning, and we were very, very, very saddened by the loss of Al Severance, a former coach at Villanova for 25 years. It's too bad that he couldn't be with us. But Father Laser made the statement that hopefully Al, when he was in heaven today, would be sitting somewhere in heaven and swatting the ball from the basket to give us a shot to win. And whether or not that was true, it's just a tremendous, tremendous feat on the part of these young men. Thank you. Coach. Very nice words from uh, the victorious coach of the Villanova Wildcats, Raleigh Massimino. We'll be checking in with Big Al Meltzer on tonight's win in just a few minutes. But, of course, they're having a big celebration tomorrow, JFK Plaza for the Wildcats. What kind of weather are we expecting for it, that? The weather's going to be great. I think right. Raleigh is just, he's just so subdued now. He's yeah. just emotionally... The air is rain. Out, you I have think. to be drained. Oh, it'll, it'll be like fun that. to see him home tomorrow. That's a real Cinderella story. How Villanova did that. Weather will be good tomorrow. Be a little cooler. Be in the